Hey everybody, welcome back to Royal Country. Today we're doing a DIY farmhouse mini riser in two ways. And yes, y'all, that is Dollar Tree. Now I'm gonna show you some options here if you wanted to make this 100% Dollar Tree. You could get one of those wooden round cutouts, one of these little rectangular pieces. I did opt for this Hobby Lobby um, round riser top, but you could use that Dollar Tree one. Any of these beads or pearls from the Dollar Tree works. I'm actually using these stickers from the Dollar Tree to make my beaded detail. And then anything that is wood for the bottom or to hold that riser up, you could choose. So those Dollar Tree little wood craft cubes or those candle cups, you're also going to need some wood glue, some hot glue, and a pair of scissors not shown. Some chalk paint or any paint of your choice. Also, I love this maple gel stain, so I try to use that whenever I can, and a Dollar Tree paintbrush. So I am crafting from my stash today, and I'm going to actually use the red pack of these stickers. I'm also using one of these rectangular pieces from the Dollar Tree, and like I said, one of the round pieces from a four pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby a while ago. Use a coupon, guys. You can pick these up super cheap. I'm also going to use a candle cup that I had on hand in my stash for one of the risers. So this is what the riser part looks like for that rounded detail that you can pick up at the Hobby Lobby. I kind of like that. I think it gives it more of a farmhouse look. I'm showing you now the profile on those stickers. I like how those, um, you know, sort of rise up. And I really like also how they are connected already. And I'll bring you in pretty close here to show you the detail of what it is that I'm talking about when I say they're connected. But they actually are. There's a strip of 12 and there's a thin clear piece that holds those together. Now these are stickers and they do stick very well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them off in a strip and I'm going to start wrapping those around both of my pieces actually to start getting my measurements. And what I end up needing is three for the round piece, four for the rectangular piece, and that works out really, really well for my measurements. Now, like I said, I had one of these candle cups and I'm going to use that for the round piece. But then I had also in my stash, this pack that I picked up from Michael's on clearance for 50 cents for all four pieces. And I'm gonna use that on the rectangular one. So now I, what I wanna do is we're going to start working on the round riser first. So I'll bring in my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to give the candle cup a really good coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. I just want to use that as the base for this mini riser. So we'll go ahead and get that painted up. One coat really did the trick on this. I love the Waverly white chalk paint. I love Waverly chalk paint seriously because it is almost always a one coat coverage for me. And I really like that it's not a lot of work to get a really nice finish on it. I really like how the chalk paint gives a texture to everything it is that I paint. And speaking of texture, what we want to do is give these stickers a wood grain sort of. I can't really explain it any better than that, but I'm going to use the Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go in one direction. So back and forth. I'm not going to sort of swirl my paintbrush around. I'm going to go in one direction to give these stickers some texture, but also a coating because I don't want the red to be showing through on the final piece. Now, when you do yours, of course, you're going to cover all three strips and then we'll set those aside and let those dry. And when we do that, we're going to bring in now this wooden riser piece that's out of that four pack. I took a paper towel, wet it down and squeezed out the water. And now I'm gonna take that beautiful maple stain that I love so, so much and add it to this wet paper towel or damp paper towel. And I'm going to use it to stain the back of this piece first. I like using the damp paper towel method because it allows that wood to sort of open up and really take that stain super well, but it's also going to allow me to get this actually dried faster so that I can finish the project. So here's what those look like after they've been painted, and they just really roll off of that backing paper. 
And I'm going to start these with a little bit of hot glue on that first sticker. And I'm going to lay this down into the groove part of that round wood piece. And as I go along, little by little, I add some more hot glue to the back of another one of those stickers. But I like that they are separated already so I don't have to really do any math or try to figure out the spacing on these. This works out really well. I definitely recommend picking up these stickers for a project like this. So this is sort of how it's starting to lay down. The stickers that don't have the um, hot glue on the back of those, those still stick super well to this round piece. So I love using these and I love how these actually adhere to the wood. And this is now where we are. We're at the third strip and we don't need the entire strip. So I'm going to start it at where I left off and we'll bring it around to the point that we no longer need the rest of that strip and just sort of trim it off and lay everything down in that groove again around that round wood piece. And when you're finished gluing everything down and sticking it down, this is what it looks like. It really does have that beaded detailed, but because we painted these in a chalk paint, we now have a texture on top of those stickers and it's really going to blend in well with the rest of this wood piece. So I'm bringing in my stain now with a foam brush and I am gonna go heavy on this. You could go light or dark depending on your decor and your style. I like how these sort of um, go dark on the real wood piece and then over the stickers, it almost looks like there was a whitewash that was done over the beaded part or the beaded detail of this. But because we have that chalk paint on there, we also have that texture that the stain picks up that really gives it a carved wood look. So you wanna take that foam brush and really try to get down in between those stickers um, along that strip that we went all the way around on this. But then you also want to use that foam brush to go ahead and stain this wood piece. And if you don't want to go as dark as I end up going, you could water down some white Waverly chalk paint and do a really nice whitewash finish over the top of this. I opted to not do that. I really wanted the beads to be more pronounced on this piece against this super dark, beautiful stain. And so while we finish standing this piece, I just want to take a moment to say hey to my returning subscribers. Thank you guys so, so much for your continued support. It really does mean so much to me. If you're new here, why don't you go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button down in the corner and becoming a member of the Royal Country family here on YouTube. We would certainly love to have you. And oh my goodness, guys, I am so pleased with how that turned out. The beaded part of that has sort of a resist and it does pick up the texture and it looks like carved wood. I just love it. So I went ahead and I turned it over. Now I'm going to use the larger candle cup to serve as the base of this mini riser. And I'm going to show you that I'm putting wood glue along the edge of this fluted part. But you'll notice at the end of this video, I actually changed my mind and put the glue on the opposite end so that the fluted part is actually what is away from the base. You'll see at the end of the video, and that's what happens, guys, when you do DIY. You just change your mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. 
So now we're going to jump into the second mini riser that we're making today. And again, I use these stickers from the Dollar Tree that I cut into strips. I'm going to apply these in the same manner that we applied the other ones to the round mini riser. I'm going to start up in the corner of this rectangular piece just below where the miter line would be there in the corner and like i said we're going to apply it the same way so we're going to put down a dot of hot glue we're going to then press these against that edge or that indentation that's there on this piece and then we're just going to use some hot glue here and there just to make sure that everything is adhered really well to the rectangular piece And so when we get to the corner on this, we're going to put a dab of hot glue there and just sort of turn it naturally around the corner. That's what's really great about these stickers being the way that they are uh, with the strip behind it. It allows you to really maneuver these and get these right into the exact spot where you want them. Now, remember I said for this one, I cut four strips. The round one, we cut three. Uh, four strips goes all the way around this and then leaves exactly one spot open. And so I just go ahead and use the remaining piece, just one little dot from the remaining strip from the round riser that we made. And it's totally fine that it's painted because we are going to paint this entire piece. Now that we have all, this, all of the stickers in place, I'm bringing in Waverly's chalk paint in the color Ballet Slipper. It's a beautiful pink chalk paint that is perfect for spring. And I'm using this mini riser in a spring decor that I have in my living room. And the pink sort of plays off the red, white, and blue. And it really does justice to the little vignette that I'm putting together. So for this piece, we are going to use the pink paint and we are going to cover the entire piece front and sides. And we're going over top of all of those little beaded details. And we're going to go ahead and just paint it up so that it has one cohesive look. We're not going to rough this up in any way. I just want the illusion of almost what you see on milk glass. I just want that illusion of raised beading on this riser. Um, and I want everything to be one cohesive color. So I wanted to bring you in nice and close so that you can see how well the chalk paint covers everything on the top, but it also gives a little bit of texture. Now I apologize for the orientation right now on this shot. I did pick up these little candle cups from Michaels on clearance, 50 cents for the entire package. And I'm using that same maple stain and I'm just going to pick up one at a time, rub it in with the um, paper towel and we're going to use these as the feet on this little mini riser. I like the color of the ballet slipper along with the maple stain for the feet that we're putting on this little riser. I think it's a really great compliment. You'll notice that I did nothing with the back of this and that's totally fine. You can turn it over, remove the sticker if you want to and paint that if you'd like. But I'm going to go ahead and use that Dollar Tree wood glue. I love this stuff. I have no problems with it whatsoever. And I'm putting these in the proper orientation. So the flat part of these sit against the bottom of the riser and then the fluted part will be what you see when you have this sat on a table or on a 
tiered tray, wherever you want to do that. So this is the top view of both of these. And you can see here that I did actually put the fluted part of that candle cup at the bottom as well. Everything matches. So guys, this is what they look like. This is that beautiful pink along with the maple stain feet. And this is the maple stain top with a white footing. Guys, this was my Dollar Tree DIY farmhouse mini riser in two ways. Yes, y'all, that really is Dollar Tree. I hope you'll go ahead and give me a like on this video if you like this content. Go ahead and watch another video while you're here, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, bye!